You know what time it is. But first, I gotta introduce somebody new. Da 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 da. This is Super Bitch. Now, a sighting of her is super rare, but it does happen from time to time. She comes out when she's needed, but also sometimes she comes out when something may be taken as big, but it really isn't. Stay tuned and you'll get to meet her husband in a later video. Now that we're all friends, let's go. Our first comment comes from TJ a blah blah blah. Why didn't Ethan and Xana call 911? They heard the same thing BF and DM heard. Four people heard what was happening, yet you only blame DM. Why? It makes zero sense. First off, this is a lot of speculation in this comment here. We don't know what Ethan and Zana heard. We don't even know they were second. Does that make any sense to anyone else besides me? On top of that, we don't even know yet that one of them didn't try to call 911. The only person we have heard anything from is the only person I speak about, and that is Dylan, who seemed to be literally in the middle of it all. She's got people on top of her and people on the same floor as her. If info comes out that gives me a good reason, then I will humbly take it all back. They should have looked much more into this case, and Dylan seems protected. It feels like everybody is cooperating to make us believe it was Brian. I gotta say, I'm with this person on the protected part, especially since we know her mom works for the University of Idaho in Boise. And if you didn't know that, you're not watching my videos because I did a video all about Dylan and her family, blah, blah. This one comes from Crystal Clear 7984. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will read what I found interesting. It was mentioned that DM's childhood has a history of DV in the parents, right? And I totally agree with the statement. You, if, if it's trauma that sent you into that frozen shock phase, then you to have trauma that has to be like a lasting impression you know what I mean so you would definitely recognize the sounds of people fighting especially I think when it got to being on the same floor as you right I can't say that I completely agree with jumping out of the window right because at some point your assumption is that this person is going to come outside and we'll discuss in a minute about the cars. It didn't appear that she had a car that she could get into. Now you could run to a neighbor's house, but are they going to answer the door before this person comes out and finds you? This TJ person again. Dogs will eat their owners if they have to. Pretty sure dogs don't understand the concept of murder. And I commented back to this because our daughter is always, you know, on that TikTok or whatever. And she makes like the fiance um, wrestle with her or pretend he's hitting her. And I mean, her dog becomes scary, right? Like it's a whole nother animal. Like the teeth come out. She's salivating. She's growling. So... I do not quite agree. I think dogs definitely alert when their owner is in trouble. And I'm obviously not the only one with this opinion. Bushy crib. The dog would have been barking like crazy. The fact that DM didn't mention it in the PCA is very questionable. Agreed. If the dog was in fact barking and you don't say that, that's odd. Holly Southern Style says, where's the other car? If all the roommates had a car, Ethan had two. And why were both of his vehicles parked at the house? I find that odd if he doesn't live there. So the cars that were 
actually in the driveway. From what I remember, the red Jeep belonged to Ethan. The blue car was Xana's. The Range Rover was obviously Kaylee's new car. And Maddie drove the white car. I have not seen it mentioned that Dylan or Bethany had a car. I will say this. I remember back when we started college, right? I'm older, obviously, than these young people. As a freshman, you couldn't have a car on campus back in the day, right? I don't know if that's changed or not, but that could be one of the reasons. Although I do find it extremely odd that we don't see cars that would have belonged to the roommates because typically they tell you you can't have a car as a freshman if you live on campus. So being that you lived off campus, I don't know why you couldn't have had one. I also remember in the TikToks that they did pretending to be each other, one of them was asking for a ride to class. So I'd have to go back and look at which one that was, but obviously that person probably was not driving. Oh Lord, I see Super B in the bottom left corner. Let's go. April Lynn 9293. That leaked photo is not showing a picture of the front of 1122 King Road. It's showing the front of the house across the street from 1122 King Road. Great video. Thank you. Denise Williams. That's not even the house. It's the house across the street from the house that's behind 1122. True Crime Goth, that drama pic, the camera is actually facing 1112 and not 1122. That was one of the big confusions. Y'all, I do my research. A lot of it, too much of it, okay? It like consumes me. We're going to go through this together to clear up any confusion out there at all. This home here is 1112 King Road. You can see it's written right there on the front of the house. I believe they also call it the King Road Cottage. This is the image in question right now. Here is a daytime view of either, I think this was on the 13th, right? I think this was 11, 13, 22. I want y'all to note these little pumpkins right here on the railing. Now we flip back to the nighttime version. Look at the little pumpkins on the railing. Here's a daytime street view. Look at the arrow. It's pointing to King Road heading back towards Taylor. Here's a nighttime view again. The arrow is pointing to that same road, King Road, heading back towards Taylor. You see this house? right here that this view is looking directly at this is that same house in the daytime note the windows are all in the same place there's lights on I think here 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 in the nighttime video okay I personally do not necessarily believe that the footage is 100% legit but should it come out to be legit Everyone needs to understand this is not looking at 1122 King Road and this is not across the street from 1122 King Road. This is literally beside 1122 King Road. So I know people ask me all the time, have you seen so-and-so's video on blah, blah, blah? Have you seen this? Have you heard this? No, I have not because... Honestly, a lot of times the things that come out are just effing crazy to me. Bear in mind, I'm not discrediting anybody if they choose to wander down a path of a conspiracy theory. I've been there. I do this myself. But more than that, what I do is use reason and like logical thinking. Let me explain what I mean. So this comment comes from Clay Jones. Zanon and Etha were e Ugh. Zanon and Ethan were over at the Fight Club located at 1320 Linda Lane. That is where they were first attacked. Then they moved them around and from place to place and then took them back to the house through tunnels. 
first and foremost, I want to know what group of studious young men you guys have helping you move and lug bodies around. Okay. Second, a fight club located at 1320 Linda Lane. Y'all, these are literally about 600 to 608 square feet of an apartment. Like, that is so small. And it's not just like a big box that's 600 square feet. You have a kitchen, a living room, one or two bedrooms, bathrooms in 600 square feet. Like, I'm not going to lie. We couldn't even host a fight club in our bedroom, and it's over 800 square feet. No, but I'll still smack that ass. Jesus, fix it. Moving on. The area of a legit boxing ring is 484 square feet. Now, this is one of them times where I probably sound like a bitch, but I'm not trying to be one. But maybe I misunderstand the interpretation of fight club. You know what I mean? I don't even know why we're talking about it since you're not supposed to talk about Fight Club, but I maybe that's just a code for a bunch of people getting together and whooping up on one or two people. Either way, a subdivided room of a 600 square foot area in total, y'all must not fight like I do. So this is a super long one. I'm not going to read it all, but it's from Musical Contessa. The part I found interesting was them saying you can't pick and choose what you heard during the crime. Like there's someone here and I'm here to help you, right? But not hear screams, moans, banging, thudding, right? And then it is a very... It seems very selective in what you are choosing to be witness to, if you will. Okay, this is one of my favorites. I'm a, it comes from, I'm a computer, one, two, three, four. So, she start, they, computer, sorry, start out by saying, like, Pending her not being blitzed out of her mind, whatever, there's zero chance. She did not hear enough to know the roommates were getting x right? And we know at least Zena put up a fight, yet everyone was completely silent during the 10-minute massacre. Absolutely love this comment because it pretty much is just validating what I was trying to say. So you heard someone say, there's someone here, followed by a man say, I'm going to help you or something like that, right? So what does that tell us? All we can do is assume that person who said there's someone here, the first person was probably talking to another awake person. Like never have I ever went through the house and looked outside and, and seen headlights or whatever and just said out loud, there's someone here to myself. I don't do that. So they, we're going to assume that person was probably talking to another awake person. So at least one of them had to be awake when the other awake person was initially attacked or getting attacked. So it stands to reason that if you have two awake people, at least two awake people, one who was talking, the second one who they were talking to, per Dylan's account, when, the, when one of them is initially attacked, the other person is literally just sitting there, just patiently waiting for their turn with this psycho. I'm going to butcher the shit out of this, but this one comes from Stephen Moorline, who says, also, what if the blank was done elsewhere and the body is dumped there? That would explain why the crime scene was not treated like one. Bodies could have been brought in via steam tunnels. All right. 
I'm going to do a quick explanation of how my brain works. When I read something like this, I'm like, is there anything else I have seen that would indicate that this is probably not the case? Immediately, I think to myself, is it possible that this could have happened elsewhere and then they did just bring back the bodies? Sure, it's possible. Do I think that happened via steam tunnel? No, I don't. I also don't believe that these poor kids were subjected to what they were subjected to anywhere other than their house. Y'all remember uh, me talking a little bit about Taylor Shabusiness? Well, we're going to bring her in on this scene as well, okay? I have to put a warning here and say it's about to get a little graphic. If y'all remember, there were news crews out there when the mattresses were removed from the Idaho home. News outlets reported they were stained with some sort of dark looking substance. Naturally, we're going to assume that is blood. And in all fairness, quite a lot of it. Now we're going to jump over to the mattress of Taylor Shabusiness. Y'all see that stain right there? That's all there is. And she literally beheaded her boyfriend. So comparing the two of them, there's definitely a lot more on the mattress from the Idaho home than there is Taylor's. And again, I'll emphasize, she took his head off. So I personally do not believe that this happened anywhere other than in their beds at King Road. So this one comes from Kay Hawkins, and I'm only going to read a little bit of it. You can pause if you want to read it, just like all the rest. But it says, when she got up in the early hours, she got BF to help push Zana's door open. And BF was her first witness. And she's obviously talking about Dylan. So, that very well could be the case. What I would want to know, though, is why. Like, you're in college. You say yourself that y'all don't go to bed till like four in the morning that morning right it's 11 58 12 o'clock in the afternoon that's literally like eight hours of sleep right so why I just in any scenario in my mind I cannot fathom why a roommate would be so worried about waking up another roommate like, I mean, even my teenage daughter knows that, like, if we get with our friends and we, like, party a little bit, do not come in my room the morning after because I'm probably not going to be the kindest person and I don't want you waking me up. Like, it needs to be a situation of wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey all on your own because mom's in here hungover as a horse. Just a disclaimer, that does not happen very often. Now, if it's a situation like their phone's going off, there's an alarm ringing, you know they have to work the next day and they're not up and you're just trying to make sure they don't miss work, I can understand that. But just to like go in, to just go in, like that's just not your typical average like roommate behavior. Now it's time for my personal favorite top comment. It comes from Yes214. The real question is, does a vegan have the energy to kill four people? Maybe in a video game. An excellent observation indeed. With that being said, I'm done here. You all have a good day and remember to eat your veggies.